final part of the course covers the testing of bituminous mixtures. This includes the particle coating test, the extraction test, testing for moisture content, determining the asphalt retention factor, the rice test, and Marshall testing. The particle coating test, or Ross count, as it is also called, is used to determine the percentage of the aggregate particles in the mix that are fully coated with asphalt. For the particle coating test, you'll need either a 3 8 inch or number 4 sieve, depending on the nominal maximum size of the material being tested. While the mix is still hot enough to keep the particles separate, screen it through the sieve. You should wind up with between 200 and 500 particles retained on the sieve. The procedure is similar to the one used for the aggregate crushed face test. Spread out the sample and immediately start examining each particle. The particle must be completely coated without any bare spots to count as a fully coated particle. But if a particle has even one small bare spot, it must be classified as partially coated. When all the particles have been classified as fully or partially coated, count the number of particles in each group and calculate the percentage of particles that are fully coated. In the extraction test, the asphalt is removed from the mix so that the asphalt content and the gradation of the aggregates can be determined. It also uses the results from the moisture content and asphalt retention tests that we'll discuss later. For the extraction test, you'll need a vented oven or hot plate to heat the material, weighing equipment, a vacuum extractor fitted with number 200 and number 16 sieves, a large wash pan with a screen spout, some medium grade filter paper, some cellite filtering aid, and methylene chloride solvent. Start with a large enough sample to provide for not only the extraction test, but also the moisture content and Marshall tests. Heat the sample until it is pliable enough to split it. Then split the sample down to the sizes needed for the individual tests. Place the sample on a tarp or sheet of brown paper and mix the sample by rolling it on the paper. When it is thoroughly mixed, spread the sample out into a flat circle about one and a half to two inches thick. Obtain the sample for the extraction test by taking out the mix from a strip across the circle and from a second strip perpendicular to the first, placing the material in the teared wash pan. A second test portion of at least 500 grams is taken and placed in the retort for the moisture content test. Samples for Marshall testing can also be taken at this time by remixing the material and taking three half strips for the three Marshall specimens. Weigh the portion for the extraction test and record this initial weight of the mix. Then let the test portion cool while you prepare the extractor. Make sure that the extractor is drained from any previous testing and that the valve is closed. Then get a sheet of filter paper, weigh it, and record the weight. Install the gasket and plate on the extractor. Place the teared filter paper on the extractor and install the funnel ring. Then prepare the cellite filtering aid by weighing out 100 grams of dried cellite and adding this weight to that of the filter paper for a combined filter weight that is recorded on the test sheet. Pour enough solvent over the cellite to cover it and stir it until the cellite is completely suspended in the solvent. Then pour the suspended solution over the filter paper and turn on the extractor's vacuum pump. When the cellite is dry enough that it begins to crack slightly, place the number 200 sieve and number 16 sieve on top of the funnel ring. Now that the extractor is ready and running, pour enough solvent over the sample so that it is covered with solvent. 
stir the mixture occasionally for at least five minutes so that the asphalt and fines are suspended in the solution. Then pour the suspended solution into the top sieve. Be careful to keep as much of the aggregate as possible in the wash pan. Again, pour solvent over the sample, soak it, and stir it. And again, pour the solution into the extractor. Continue to repeat this process of washing the aggregates in solvent and pouring off the solvent until the solution is a light straw color. This indicates that most of the asphalt has been extracted from the aggregates. Transfer the aggregate from the wash pan into a pan for drying and use solvent to rinse out any remaining fines from the wash pan into the top sieve. Also, use solvent to rinse out any asphalt from the sieves as they are removed. Remove the number 16 sieve and place its contents with the other aggregates in the drying pan. Remove the number 200 sieve, again using the solvent to rinse it. After the fines in the number 200 sieve have dried, add them to the drying pan. Turn off the extractor, open its drain valve, and remove the funnel ring, taking care to clean off any fines. Carefully remove the filter paper and fold it so that none of the cellite and minus 200 material is lost. Place it on top of the other aggregate in the drying pan or in its own drying pan. Dry all the extracted aggregates and the filter pad to a constant weight. Then weigh the filter, cellite, and minus 200 material, record this weight, and discard the filter and its material. Finally, weigh the rest of the dried extracted aggregate and record this weight, but do not throw it away. You'll need it to test its gradation. The coarse sieving of extracted aggregates is similar to that of other aggregates, but normally you would hand shake it using 12 inch sieves. In the fine sieving, a wetting agent is used in washing the fines from extracted aggregates and allowance must be made for the minus 200 fines that were discarded with the filter pad. To accurately calculate the amount of asphalt extracted, you'll also need to determine the amount of moisture in the mix. You'll need some xylene solvent, a water condenser and trap, the 500 gram sample that was sealed in the retort earlier, and equipment to heat the sample. Measure 200 milliliters of the xylene solvent and place it in the retort with the sample of mix. Stir the xylene into the mix and place the cover back on the retort. Then, assemble the water condenser and trap. Start distilling the mix and solvent by applying heat so that it begins to reflux within five to 10 minutes and the solvent drips at a rate of about 85 to 95 drops per minute. But be careful in heating it so that the solvent does not ignite. Continue the distillation process until three consecutive readings at 15 minute intervals show no increase in moisture. From this reading and the weight of the sample, you can calculate the moisture content. The asphalt retention test is used to determine how much asphalt remains with the aggregates after extraction. In a bituminous mix, most of the asphalt fills the voids between the aggregate particles. When we extract the asphalt, we remove most of it, but not all of it. So the asphalt retention test is used to determine how much asphalt remains with the extracted aggregates. For the asphalt retention test, you'll need an oven, a hot plate to heat the asphalt, weighing equipment, vacuum extraction equipment, and equipment for mixing the material, including another hot plate to keep it warm. First, prepare four samples of aggregate of 2,400 grams each, and with each sample graded to match the mix design. Oven dry the four samples to achieve a constant weight, 
and to heat them to mixing temperature. After drying, remove one of the four samples, transfer it to a teared mixing bowl on the balance and form a shallow pit in the center of the material. Then slowly add small amounts of dry pass four material until the sample weighs exactly 2,400 grams. The asphalt used in the test must be the same type and grade as specified in the mix design. It should be kept fluid on a hot plate between 250 and 300 degrees. Before adding any asphalt, use the specified asphalt content to calculate the amount of asphalt to be added to the 2,400 grams of aggregates. Slowly add the asphalt to the aggregate until you reach the calculated total weight. Then mix the sample thoroughly until all aggregate particles are coated and there are no rich spots of asphalt. Next. Place the mixed sample in the oven at 230 degrees Fahrenheit and let it cure for two hours. After two hours, remove the cured sample from the oven and let it cool for about 15 to 20 minutes. Conduct an extraction test on the cured sample and determine the percentage of asphalt extracted. The percentage of asphalt retained is simply the difference between the percentage originally added and the percent extracted. Repeat the entire process for each of the other three samples and calculate the average percent retained for all four samples. The rice test is used to determine the maximum specific gravity of uncompacted